Welcome to today's webinar. We'll wait for a couple more minutes to see if more people are joining us, and then we'll get started. Great, good afternoon everybody and welcome to today's webinar on how to promote your involvement in the European Vocational Skills Week to the media. My name is Iris Banyo and I'm a communications consultant at The Chorus UK. I've actually been involved in the campaign since 2016, since the first year that the campaign started and I'm delighted to be here with you today. We have actually a lot of interesting tips and tricks for you to make the most of reaching out to the media but before we get started with all the interesting content, I need to go over a few technical details just to make your webinar experience as easy as possible. You should hopefully see the attendee interface on your own computer and desktop, and you should be hopefully already listening to me clearly uh, using your computer speaker system. On the left, you have the go to webinar viewer, and there you will see the presentation. You will see the slides that I'm going to be sharing with you today. And to the right, you can see the go to webinar control panel. And in there, you can submit questions or comments just by simply typing them into the questions box. We will have some time for a Q&A at the end of the webinar. So I ask you from now to please don't be shy and start thinking, do I have questions? Yes. And please share them at the end of the webinar because I'm sure that they will be useful for all the participants here today. And of course, if you're having any technical issues or any technical questions during the presentation, you can always contact us through our email. And our email is info at vocationalskillsweek.eu. Info at vocationalskillsweek.eu. But now, let's uh, get down to business. And let me first give you a quick overview of today's agenda. We are going to start with some information about this webinar. We're going to be talking about what's the objective of this webinar, why are we here today. Um, then we're going to be talking a little bit about the European Vocational Skills Week campaign, what's the campaign about. And then we will look at all the ways in which you can promote your event to the media. And here we will discuss the importance of knowing your audience. Who are you talking to? as well as the importance of your key messages and tools that you can use to achieve successful media coverage. Finally, at the end, we're going to have a short Q&A session. As I said, you can fire any questions, any comments that you may have. And I really want to keep this interactive. So this webinar is going to have different polls, you will see, throughout the session. And with that, I want to get some information from you as well. I don't want to be talking to you for about 45 minutes. 
I also want you to give me some information. So having said that, let's start. And we're going to be talking about this webinar and the objectives of the webinar. So to summarize, the objective of this webinar today is to help you promote your events and activities to the media and also to help you to raise awareness of the European Vocational Skills Week campaign and the benefits of vocational education and training across Europe. For this, and throughout the webinar, I'm going to be giving you some strategic direction and guidance, as well as some practical advice. So we're going to be doing both strategy and tips and tricks to secure coverage. And hopefully all the strategy that I'm going to be giving you at the beginning is going to get you thinking. And you can also try the practical tips straight away on your media activities. So what's the campaign about, actually? Let's talk a little bit about the European Vocational Skills Week campaign. As you probably already know, the European Vocational Skills Week is an initiative from the European Commission. And the objective of the campaign is to raise the attractiveness of vocational education and training in Europe. So actually the aim of the week is to make vocational training more of an appealing proposition and present it as a smart choice, as a first choice, that can actually help young and also adult learners to achieve their potential. As you know, the week is open to all organizations promoting vocational education and training in any of the European member states, but also in all the EU candidate countries and ECTA countries. So we're going to have events and activities, including yours, taking place all over Europe from April until December 2019. At the moment, we have over 500 events already during the week, and we have more joining us every day. So the numbers actually increase every day. This is the fourth edition of the week, so it's actually the fourth year that we're doing this campaign. And as you know, there's always an official week with some central event and this year, the official week is taking place in Helsinki, in Finland, and it's taking place from the 14th to the 18th of October. Here, I want to talk to you a little bit about past campaigns. Um, we're going to be talking later if this is your first campaign or if you're already familiar with, with the week, but I really want to highlight that this is a very successful campaign. As I mentioned, I've been involved in it since the first year, since 2016. And here, today, I wanted to share with you some highlights from, from last year, from 2018, because really, the numbers are really good. And what we need to do, and the objective of this webinar, is to build on this success through the media. So just quickly looking at some numbers from last year. Last year, in 2018, we had over 1,800 events across Europe. Um, with actually 2.4 million participants all over Europe and over 100,000 visits to the campaign web pages. And we also put a very strong social media campaign around the week and we actually reach over 39 million people across Europe. So these numbers are very successful and they, they, they give you a sense of, yes, you should be part of this campaign and we should be building on the success of past years. Talking a little bit about this year, theme, the, this year's theme is actually vocational education and training for all, skills for life. And what we want to be communicating this year is that actually, while well, vocational education and training is inclusive, and it's for everybody from all ages. So we really want to be focusing on the lifelong aspect of vocational education and training. Because sometimes vocational education and training is characterized as being for certain demographics, maybe it's associated for, with young people, but actually it's also necessary later in life. So we need to pay attention to learning for the whole of life and also that learning needs to include everybody. So this is the theme that we want to be highlighting this year. As I mentioned before, um, this webinar, I want it to be interactive. So I will be getting some of your feedback and your insights through exciting polls. You will be seeing the question on, on the screen. So all you need to do is select your response and click submit. Um, I will give you some time, around 20 seconds, to think about it and have enough time to, to reply. So really, there's no need to panic. 
and then we look at the results and we'll talk a little bit about the results. So we can now first launch the first question uh, of today and I would like to find a little bit more about your involvement in the week. So the first question for you today is have you already participated in any editions of the European Vocational Skills Week? Have you participated in any editions of the week? And you have three options. Yes, only one year, perhaps last year. Yes, more than one year. And no, 2019 is my first year. I'm a newbie. I'm joining you for the first time this year. I will now give you some time to reply. I see that most of you have voted, but I'll, uh, I'll give you about five seconds. Let's now close the poll. Thank you so much for your uh, replies. So let's look at the results. It looks like actually the majority, 57%, it's your first year today. So welcome very much, welcome, and thanks for joining. And I really hope that uh, this uh, introduction also gave you a bit of an insight and background on the campaign. Then we have 29% uh, that uh, have already participated at least one year. So um, today's webinar is actually more in depth than last year, and we're going to be looking at some more strategies. So hopefully it, you're also going to get some new tips if you were with us last year. And then we have somebody who has been with us for more than one year. So um, I say welcome as well, and uh, I hope that you can also learn new things from, from today. Okay, so let's now continue with the presentation and I want now to dig into how to promote your event to the media and first of all I want to be talking about why should you tell the media about your involvement in the week well first of all communicating to the media will bring many benefits for both your event and also the campaign and will help us to build on the success, on the success that I was talking about before, of the week in 2016, 2017, and 2018. If your objective is for people to attend your event, well, obviously, if more people know about your event, then more people will attend. And reaching out to the media will also give you more visibility and will show the amazing job that you are doing. And it can also help to raise the profile of your organization beyond the existing context that you might already have. And remember the aim of the campaign. Reaching out to the media will help to raise awareness and shift the perception of vocational education and training in your country and in Europe. And you will tell me, okay, it is, I, I see the benefits of communicating my event, but where should I start? Well, first of all, you really need to be thinking about which types of media you want to reach out to. And here, my first piece of advice is to think big. You can start approaching your local and regional newspapers, but really don't be afraid of approaching national media, because you will be surprised to see how much interest national media has in human stories. I would advise you to reach out to education and employment sections, because they might have an interest in the topic that we're discussing today, which is vocational education and training. Something else are event listings, and this is another great way of encouraging people to come to your event. Uh, you can find them online and they often have information on local events as well. Other topic relates to vocational education and training, well, approaching specialist publications is also crucial, and those could be education magazines, parenting magazines, business magazines. And here it's very important for you to think about your target audience. Who are you trying to reach with your event? And find the key publications that are read or watched by them. And with the specialist publications, you need to remember that their editorial calendars can fill up well in advance. So it is best to contact them well before your event if you haven't done so yet. We usually only think about print and digital. Um, but radio and TV are also a good option. And actually, local radios and TVs are also interested in human stories and in events that provide good content for filming and recording. So if your event you think has good content for, for filming, 
go ahead and also reach out to, to radios and to TVs. And finally, another key media I wanted to mention, if you're targeting young people, is actually student publications. So remember that career services often have publications and they reach out to big groups of students. So you can also get in touch with them to promote your event. And here's something very, very, very important. And if you leave this webinar with only one thing, remembering one thing, I really want it to be this. And it's actually that a good contact list is the first step for successful media coverage. And in fact, without a good contact list, there will be no media coverage. So I really want you to remember this point. And here I want to highlight a couple of important points before you talk to the media. There's two important things you're going to need when you're communicating effectively to the media. The first one is an appropriate message or a messages to or to. You need to think about what do you want to say and to whom. And the second element, important element, is an, having an understanding of your target audiences. So which media do you want to reach and why? So really, analyzing your audience means that you can develop more persuasive arguments. So these two points are extremely important. If we go to the messages, well, messages really need to be tailored to the target audience. And they need to connect with people at the individual level. So you need to think about, well, what's, what's important for the people that are reading you or that are watching you? And then you need to try and connect with them at the human level. And also think about what you want your audience to remember. Make it short, make it memorable, and, and don't be afraid of repeating the same message, um, just to make sure that that message is really understood. And really be specific and concrete. And I would really tell you to avoid any technical language. We all use acronyms, and this is a mistake that we make. Uh, we think that everybody knows the acronyms that we use, but that may not be the case. So if you're going to use acronyms, it's always best to use them and write them in full, spell them out. And here I have an exercise for you um, that I want you to do in your own time. If you haven't done so yet, you may have done it already. And I really want you to think before you start putting together a press release or any media materials, I want you to think about two or three messages that you would like the journalist to report on about your event or your story. So think about yourself as a journalist and think that you would be writing the story. What's your headline? Once you have the headline, that would be your key message. So that is very important and it's an easy exercise for you to do before you start uh, writing any press releases. To get some inspiration, I've actually had a look at the media coverage reports that we prepare about the campaign every year. So every year since the beginning, we monitor the media coverage that the campaign gets all across Europe. And for that, we monitor several keywords and, and themes. And I wanted to share with you today some of the main topics or the themes that were covered in 2018, just to get you thinking and, to, and for you to know which topics were mostly covered by media. So some of the topics that were covered last year were related to the official week, um, but there were actually loads of coverage on national and regional events. Um, some of them were highlighting companies and organizations working together, and there were also two themes that the media last year seemed to like quite a lot. Maybe you could build on it this year. The first one was the creation of jobs through vocational education and training. So the media really liked the fact that people are getting jobs across Europe thanks to these opportunities. And the second one is the future of vocational education in Europe. So with, with all the changes that we're going through with the digital world, um, changing us and challenging us. These, these were two topics, two of the topics that the media really picked up on last year. So let's now move to um, target audiences. So this is the second important element for you to think before you're trying to reach out to, to the media. It's important to understand who you're trying to reach. And I want to talk to you about the concept of multipliers. Some of you may already be aware and uh, familiar with this concept. You need to think of the media as a multiplier, which means media is a tool that is going to let you reach your final audience. Who is that final audience? Well, it will really depend on you, but you may be trying to reach students, you may be trying to reach your local citizens for them to come to your event, you may be trying to reach politicians, business people, 
So the media is really a multiple here. You're trying to reach the media in order to reach a final target audience. So you should be asking yourself the questions that are on the screen in order to understand who is your target audience. Well, who, who are those people? What do they care about? And why is your story and event relevant to them? Something that we make a mistake is that we think that our stories are the most interesting and for us they might be and we're doing a, a good job, a hard job, but actually we always need to put ourselves in the shoes of the journalists or of the people and we need to think what's in it for them, why are they interested, why would they be interested, and then we really need to get that hook and sell that to, to journalists. And here again you need to remember to make your messages relevant to the target audience. In order to uh, research your audience, you can ask yourself some, some other questions. For example, you can, you can know your audience by asking, well, are you talking to an economic journal or are you talking to a local TV station? Because then your messages are going to be different. Have you watched or listened the program that you're trying to, to reach? Have you read the, the newspaper? And if you're reaching out to specific journalists, I would really advise you to research the reporter's past work and understand who reads them, who watches them, and why. To decide which type of media to approach, the first step actually is to do good research. So you need to identify which media covers your local and regional area. But as I said before, really be, be ambitious. And I advise you to find out the contact details of the specific journalists that cover local events, employment, or education issues. And if you cannot find them on their website, I would really advise you to ring the media offices because they usually can provide you with the details. As an alternative that has worked uh, for me before, you can also track journalists on social media. All journalists are on Twitter and they are very active there, so you can engage them there. And I cannot emphasize enough the importance of obtaining specific email addresses and phone numbers because sending a press release or any other material to a general inbox that you can find on, online is really not enough because in, in fact you have to be extremely lucky for your piece of news to be picked up and think that general inboxes receive hundreds of press releases and emails per day so this is why it's so important that you send it to the relevant person and that your press release hits the right person. Um, regarding um, event listings, the submission process can be a bit different, so you should check online and you should find out how to submit your event to the relevant listings. And great, let's now get on with our second question, second poll question. So we're going to be launching the second question. And the question is, are you in touch with journalists as part of your job? I here I want to understand if media relations is part of your, your daily job. So you have three options to answer. Yes, regularly. Yes, from time to time. Or no. Media relations um, is not a part of my usual task. Okay, I'll give you, I see everybody has voted, so let's uh, close the poll. Okay, so to the question, are you in touch with, uh, with journalists? Um, actually, we have a tie here. So 43% um, of you said not yet, and then 43 said yes, but still at, uh, at planning stage. So I'm hoping that uh, we're going to go into some, some tips and tricks for you to get in touch with, with journalists. So I'm really hoping that uh, these numbers are going to increase. And then we have 13% that says yes, uh, I'm in touch with journalists. So I'm hoping that that person can build on the work that they have already done. Let's now close the poll. And we're going to be launching a third question today. Let's uh, first look at the question, great. So you should now see it on the screen. And we will now launch the poll. 
And this one is specifically about your event. The previous question was about, well, are you actually in touch with journalists usually? Um, but this one, I really want to know if you have already started promoting your event or your story to the media. Um, and you have three options here. Yes, I've already been in touch with journalists about my story. Yes, but I'm still at planning stage, so maybe you are looking at your press releases or your uh, media materials. Um, and then there's a third answer, no, not yet. So I'll give you now five seconds to reply. Right, so I've seen all of you voted. You're very good today. I have to uh, congratulate you. And here we have a winner. And actually, most of you, by far, have said that, no, not yet. You still have not um, started promoting your event. Obviously, this is going to depend on when your event is. So perhaps you still have some time. But it's good that you are joining us today. And we're going to be looking at a couple of sections on, on the tools and some tips, some more practical tips on how to promote your events. So I'm really hoping that you are going to leave the webinar ready to start talking to journalists. So let's now close the poll. And we will continue with the content. OK, great. So let's now look into the tools to use in media relations. Uh, I'm sure most of you are aware of the importance of the press release. So the press release is the traditional tool in public relations to send information to the media. And it is true that there are some other digital tools that are used nowadays. Um, some people like to use social media posts, video releases, broadcasts, but actually data shows that journalists still want press releases. So today we're still going to be talking about the press release because it, it's still really important and journalists still want to receive press releases. So I really advise you to use the European Vocational Skills Week template. Uh, we have prepared a template for you. It should be on the website. At the moment it should be in English, but uh, in the coming days it's going to be uploaded as well in all EU languages. So hopefully you can just get the template that goes well for, for your event. And the press release follows the visual identity of the week and has some information about the campaign. So you could get that and then just fill it in with some information about your event. Um, a couple of more technical but extremely important points to mention about press releases is actually that the subject line of your press release is key. Uh, if journalists only scroll through the releases, and I'm telling you, you receive hundreds of press releases, they need to be attracted to your subject line. So make it, make sure that you make it short and snappy. It needs to be attractive. And also, if you can, remember to copy paste the press release directly onto the email. This is a mistake that we have all done. Try not to include the press release as an attachment, as many media outlets do not open emails with attachments. And this is just due to security reasons. Remember that the objective of your press release is to provide journalists with relevant information about your event and the campaign. So any additional material that they can publish, together with the text and with the information that you give them, such as photos, quotes, infographics, or facts and figures, are extremely important, and they will actually bring your press release to life. The first point I wanted to mention is campaign visuals. If you go to our website, to the uh, campaign's website, you can find quite a lot of nice visuals that we have put together for you. They are there for you to use, and they follow the visual identity of the week. So please use them on social media for your press activities. They are there for you to use. Of course, you can also, you should use your own event pictures. Um, and here, be sure to get all the necessary photo permissions before you send those to the journalist. You need to make sure that the pictures can be disseminated, that you have the right um, permissions. Something else that works really well with press is any videos that you may have, any content that you may have, as well as inspiring stories, because journalists really like success stories. For example, you can, you can get testimonials, you can get beneficiaries, you can get young people, you can get adults um, explaining their story, and that really resonates with media. It's that human impact that really resonates with media. 
Remember to also include quotes in your press release. They can be from speakers at your event, they can be from experts, or even testimonials, as I said before. And facts and figures on vocational education and training. These can be regional, country specific, even local, if you have access to those numbers, or even EU wide. And here I cannot stress this enough journalists love numbers and they love including statistics in their articles, so make sure that you include some facts and figures as well in your press release. Regarding facts and figures, of course you will be the best one to know any local or regional statistics at your local level, but for any national or European statistics that you may want, um, I actually recommend three main sources and you have them here on the screen. The first one is the Education and Training Monitor 2018. Um, they have 28 country reports. This is prepared by the uh, Directorate General of Education and Culture by the Commission, and it has lots of nice data at the national level. Something else as well at the national level are the Fed in Europe country reports prepared by CEDEFOB. Again, lots of interesting data for you to, to get there at the national level. And of course, we couldn't forget Eurostat, um, which has some specific statistics on vocational education and training, and also some statistics on adult learning. So if you're working on adult learning, you can also get quite a lot of nice statistics from there. If you're using any of these facts and figures, remember to always quote the source, because journalists always want to know where the figures are, are coming from. They need to make sure that they are robust. So just by including the source, you, you, you really speed up the process and they may want to investigate further. Maybe your statistics really interested them and they may want to go further in depth. So yeah, just remember to include the, the source. Let's talk a little bit about timing because timing is key in media relations. And if you get the timing wrong, well, there is not much hope for your press release to be picked up. Let's start with local media and daily newspapers. So for daily newspapers, it is advised to send the press release to the relevant journalist around two weeks before the event. And remember to send a reminder a day or two before the, the event. Really don't be afraid of sending a reminder because journalists get quite a lot of press releases. So a reminder one day or two before, it's always good. If you send your press release too early, journalists will forget about it. They receive too many things. But if you send it too late, your calendars may already be full. So I think this rule of one week before and then a follow-up a couple of days before, it works well. Um, here we need to make a distinction with specialist publications and magazines because, as I mentioned before, it is always better to send the press release earlier to these specific publications because the editorial calendars may get booked up in advance. Uh, some more tips about timing. Do not send press releases all on a Friday. I would really advise Tuesdays or Wednesdays and never after 6 p.m. Because if you send it on a Friday or late in the evening, it will really stay at the bottom of the journalist's inbox. And by the time they get to it, they'll have gone through hundreds of emails. And as I mentioned before, we really need to do what we can in order to make our press material stand out. If you don't receive any answers, don't, please don't be discouraged. A phone call to the right journalist may pique their interest. And as I mentioned before, if you cannot get their phone number, really follow them on Twitter and send them a message and they may be responsive that way. And you would be really surprised at the response rate on social media. They really use Twitter as a source for news, so you may be able to get them there. One of the benefits of talking directly to, to the journalist is that you can also find out if they have any special requirements. Maybe they need specific data or maybe they need a specific picture. And here I want to talk to you about some tips on press releases, on what needs to be included in press releases. The first important point here is that you really need to put the important information first. Think like a journalist, put yourself in their shoes, and always answer the five W in the first paragraph. The five W are what, who, when, where, and why. And really, the first part of that is what in journalism we call the lead, and your, your lead should really answer these five questions. Remember that journalists receive many releases, so we need to attract their interest from the beginning. And let's imagine that they don't have enough time, and they only read the first paragraph of your press release, 
Well, they would really need to know everything about your event. And then, further down the press release, you can include quotes, you can include background information, you can include statistics, but really the five W should be answered in your event. We already mentioned it before, but you should really use short sentences and dynamic language. Avoid technical language, we said it before, no acronyms, or if you need to include acronyms, write them in full. Um, to make your material a bit more attractive, remember to just not include text, but also hyperlinks, videos, quotes, any figures, any pictures that you might have. And always, always, and this is important, include your contact details in case your journalist wants to follow up with you. Another topic that I wanted to touch upon today is actually relationships with uh, journalists. Obviously, building a good relationship with journalists will help you to get coverage. And the ideal situation would be, of course, to have an ongoing relationship with journalists. Keep them informed on your events and news. And I say ideal because we saw it before from your answers in the poll. It's always not possible, and even media relations may not be part of your day-to-day -day jobs, so there may be no time or there may be time constraints to, to have this ongoing relationship with, with journalists. But really this is something for you to take into account. Maybe there's not enough time to nurture a relationship with all journalists, but if you know that there's specific journalists you want to target, it is really worth investing a bit of time in that relationship. And I always put as an example in my previous job, um, we really had strong relationship with journalists and how we did it is well we went for lunch with really specific and relevant journalists for us quite regularly i would say maybe once per month we would take them on a one-to-one -one lunch which of course it's not always possible um, but then it would just be quite an informal chat an informal lunch to let them know what, what we had going on, what events we had coming up and then just see if they were interested in any of our stories and that would really well um, of course, this would be the ideal situation. As I said, there may not be time, but it's really something for you to keep in mind is building relationships with journalists. Again, remember that you can follow up with a phone call and ask about any specific requirements that they might have. And important, if you're inviting journalists to your event, it's very, very important to have somebody there to welcome them and make sure that they have all the information and the technical support. And this is even more crucial if you are inviting TVs or radios because they might have some requirements for their technical equipment. So if you have somebody there, maybe you can just have a small press corner, just somebody designated to welcome them. Um, if they feel welcome and they feel that they have all the information, they are more likely to come back in the future. So let's now look at our fourth poll. And this question is about media interviews. We're going to be talking a little bit about interviews, so I want to ask you, well, have you given any media interviews already? And the three options that we have are yes, regularly, it's something that I do regularly, yes, once or twice, or no, I've never given one. Almost all of you voted. I'll give you a couple more seconds and then we close. Okay, let's now close the poll and let's look at the results. So it looks like most of you have never uh, given an interview before. So hopefully the webinar today will, will show you that while giving interviews, it's something additional that you can do to all your media activities. Uh, but then we have quite a, we have some of you that have given interviews once or twice, which is good, and even somebody who gives them regularly. So I'm hoping you'll get some more of the strategic um, background of, of interviews. So let's now close the poll and let's continue with the content. And as I said, 
we're going to be talking a little bit about tips for successful interviews. So interviews can be another powerful tool to attract media attention. They can be a good addition to any press releases or media materials that you put together. They can be conducted face-to-face -face at an event, over the phone or by email, even though I would really suggest face-to-face -face when possible. So it's for you to remember to provide journalists with background information on your organization and also on the week. It's always good to give them some, some context. And if you're going to be the speaker, um, it's very important that you prepare in advance, that you're prepared on, on what to say. You should focus on the key messages that you want to provide and present your main points first. And as I said before, do not be scared of repeating and repeating and repeating always on script and you should always be repeating your messages. Be concise and you can use examples and personal stories. As we mentioned before, journalists really like this human touch and the human tangible impact. Um, so those are the stories that journalists love. Make sure that you use them. And as I said before, you should always leave your contact details in, ca in case a reporter needs to double check some information. If you're not giving the interview yourself, uh, maybe this has happened to you in the past, it may be a good idea to arrange it with someone else, for example, a speaker at your event or, or a testimonial even. And in that case, you should decide who would be the best person and brief them on the key messages. Um, I would always advise to have a test run in order to avoid surprises because I was attending a media training not that long ago and they mentioned even the most experienced of the speakers need a run test. So just make sure that you have a um, yeah, couple of tests to just know that you are comfortable or that whoever is speaking is comfortable in talking to, to journalists. And here I wanted to quickly talk a little bit about the difference between press and TV and radio interviews. I wanted to talk about the advantages and the advantages of print versus TV and radio. Uh, print interviews are obviously more relaxed. Um, however, for TV and radio, you present the story in your own words. So usually they can be more powerful and they are also more difficult to be misrepresented. Uh, sometimes we give an interview and then we read what the journalist has produced and then we, we think, well, hold on a minute, I didn't say that. Um, so this is a bit more difficult to happen when it's TV and, and radio. Uh, and more people watch TV, so um, it can have a greater impact. Even though here, and this goes back to our target audiences, the section that we looked at the beginning, it is very important for you to know your target audiences and know what they read and they watch. And the media landscape is changing with digital becoming a, a very important channel. So once you choose the audience that you want to reach, I would really advise you to conduct a mapping just to find out which media they, they consume. On the other hand, most print media, especially local media or specialist publications, uh, can often struggle to fill in column inches. So it might be a bit easier to send your story to print media. And there's a bit less stress with, with print media because they can be done over the phone or at any time and there's no need to travel to, to a studio or to a film uh, to film a location. So it's really worth for you to, to explore all these options and know that they're out there and then think and decide which one you would really bring added value to your event. We are now getting to an end. So I wanted to quickly give you a summary of today's webinar before we uh, go into the Q&A section for you to ask me any questions or let me know any comments that you may have. And these on the screen are the key points that I would like you to remember. Before you talk to the media, there are two important things for you to think about. The first one is your messages. And the exercise that we talked about, you sitting down and thinking, okay, what's my headline? If I was a journalist, what I would want to write about, that's very important. And the second element is your target audience. Remember the concept of using media as a multiplier. So you should be thinking which type of media I want to reach, but what's my final target audience as well? And then all your messages should be specifically target, targeted at that audience. It's important for you to decide which type of media you would like to approach after this mapping that you, that you have done. Then adapt the template press release. Remember that you can go onto the website and you can get the template in English and it's going to be uploaded pretty soon 
in all the EU languages. You can add any local or regional information that you think is relevant. Facts and figures, remember, journalists love numbers and statistics. You can use the EU sources that I mentioned about. You can also use any national or local uh, numbers, depending on what you think is really going to interest journalists. And then remember to include photos, quotes, infographics, videos that can really bring your press release to life. Think about the option of interviews. Maybe it can be yourself, maybe there's somebody else that is better place to give an interview. And even the press release and photos to media contacts. And here, really be mindful of timing. Um, something I haven't mentioned before is that there's the possibility of sending the press release before your event. This is what we call sending a press release under embargo, which means the journalist is not supposed to have this arrangement with the journalist, and the journalist is not supposed to publish any information until the event has happened. Um, and if you have uh, trust, you have a good relationship with the journalist, and there's really no, no sensitive information there, sending them the press release in advance can help them because that means they have a bit more time to put together um, those articles. Always remember to follow up with a phone call to key media and don't be discouraged if you're not getting any answers. Just keep trying, maybe use Twitter as well to reach out to them. Include your name and contact details in all your press materials and be there to welcome journalists or have somebody in your event if you're inviting journalists to introduce them to interesting people and just to make sure that they are feeling welcomed. Okay, and now it's uh, question time. So here I really want to know your thoughts or any questions that you may have about media relations, about what we have discussed, any other questions that you have. And uh, we have some time now to start answering the questions. And you can submit any of your questions through the questions pane in your attendee control panel. Okay, so it looks like we have received um, one question. We actually have a couple of questions. So we have one that is asking, what is a good contact list? This is actually a very interesting question. Um, by good, we mean a contact list that is going to be able to reach your objectives. And this is what I said, it's very important for you to think about the strategy behind your media. So you should really think, sit down and think, okay, what am I, to, what am I trying to do? Am I just trying to get published? Am I trying to get the name of the organization on the media? So in that case, your objective would be to raise awareness of your organization, or am I trying to, let's say, get more people to come to my event? And in that case, am I trying to get, let's say, more young people to come to my event? So a good contact list would be that contact list that is going to enable you to reach that objective. So let's say you want to get more students to come to your event. In that case, your contact list should be a list of media, local media, that will make your messages resonate and that will really help you to reach those students. So in that case, for example, you could have a, you, could, you should do a mapping and say, okay, students in my town read newspaper X, they watch, uh, they watch this channel, and then your contact list should be that. So I, I hope this has answered your, your question. Obviously, all contact lists are going to be different, so there's not one con good contact list. It's going to be different for each of you, but it's really linked to your objectives. So the first thing that you should think about is your objective, and then a good contact list will be that one that enables you to, to reach those objectives. Um, then we have another question from Moritz. Uh, he's asking us if it would be beneficial to provide examples as to how an organization uh, can actually implement some of the tools that we provide. Well, actually, um, this is, again, a, a very good question. So for some of the campaign visuals, um, we're aware that loads of organizations across Europe have been using them on social media. So they've been promoting the campaign on, on social media. 
And we're also aware, because we picked it up on the media coverage reports that I was talking about before, we also know that quite a lot of organizations took the, that template press release that I'm talking about, and they filled it in with their information, and then they disseminated it to the media. So there's quite a lot of resources for you on the website to use. You're going to find different toolkits. There's one on media, which includes everything that we discussed about today. There's another one on social media, and there's another one in communications. And in there, you will find even more resources for, for you to use. And you can also follow other organizations in, in social media, and then you can see there how, how they are implementing these, uh, these resources. But we're well aware that the organizers are using campaign social media and they are also using press releases. Okay, so a very interesting question about timing. Um, so Elena is uh, asking us um, for the events in December, if we need to adapt the timing when approaching the media, and that's an absolute yes. Uh, I don't know if your events would happen before or after um, celebrations, but we need to think that uh, it's a very busy period, as you say, so I would really try to give them a bit more notice in advance. I said a couple of weeks, that would be in normal circumstances. If you are planning your event in December, I would really think of getting in touch with them a bit before, even maybe giving them three weeks, um, three weeks to four weeks notice in advance because yeah, Christmas is a really busy time and um, journalists may be interested in other types of topics. Um, so just yeah, make sure that you reach out to them well in advance so that they know it's coming and just follow up with them right before the event, a few days before so that they know um, and they don't forget about it. So we have a question from, a couple of questions from Imma Kulada from Spain. Imma, hello. Uh, thank you for your question. Um, so Imma is saying that she has some short videos in English um, and she's asking if she should use subtitles in English to share. Um, this is a very interesting question and again, it links to your objectives. So you should think which, which audience are you trying to reach. If you're trying to reach people in Spain, then I would say no, it's probably, um, uh, then, then you would need the subtitles in, in English or even subtitles in Spanish. Um, and for the rest of the videos, um, we would say that yes, for social media, um, some people do not uh, actually listen to the videos and that's a, a trend that we have been seeing actually. People just watch videos with subtitles, mostly on Facebook. So I would really recommend you to have the videos in English with English subtitles. And again, if you are also going to reach out in Spain and you may think that not everybody there um, may speak English, then it may also be worth to including sub subtitles in Spanish as well. And we have another question from Inma um, about, she's asking about the official week in Helsinki about attendance. Um, for this question, I think it's best if you send us an email to our email address. You can see it in the, in the slides. Um, and my, my colleagues that are in charge of logistics, I think they'll be able to, to help you with, with that question. We have a few more minutes, so if you have any, any more questions, thank you so much. It's, it's been great to have so many questions. We actually have one more question. Um, so the question is, does the European Commission provide media contact details? Um, this is again another very good question and unfortunately because the week is taking place across all EU member states and, and kind of the countries, um, it's not possible for the Commission to, to provide media contact details. But um, if you go online and you go onto our website, there's all these resources that I was talking about, there's a media toolkit that includes all the information we discussed today. Um, and there's, again, some more tips that can help you to, to build a contact list. Um, and also, as this goes back to the question that we were discussing before about what's a good contact list, um, 
it, there's no one contact list, so it, it, it wouldn't be smart either to just share one contact list with, with all of you because all of you are going to have different objectives, different target audiences, and it's really up to you and for you to do this mapping or discussing and then hopefully reach out to as many people as possible. Okay, great. So I see that there are no more questions for now. Um, remember that you can always um, contact us and here in the slide you can see our contact details. So if you have any more questions after the presentation or throughout your organization of the event, please get in touch with us. Um, you can get in touch through our email, you can also give us a call, or you can get in touch through our social media channels. So you have our Twitter and also our Facebook details here. And you can also find the slides of the presentation that we discussed today to download in the platform. So feel free to download them and share them with, with any colleagues. I really want to thank you for attending today's webinar and I really hope that you found the information useful and that your media campaign or outreach and activities are a success. And once you leave today's webinar, you are going to receive a survey on the presentation. So I would really appreciate if you would complete that and provide your feedback because it's really going to help us for future years. And if you love the webinar so much and you would like to watch it again or share it with your colleagues, well, don't worry. We will also follow up uh, with a link to view the recording of today's webinar and we'll hopefully also put all the webinars on the website. There's going to be three of them, media, social media and another one on communications. So finally, on behalf of the European Vocational Skills Week, thank you again for joining us today. Enjoy the rest of your day and best of luck with your media campaign.